all appear in. They're off. In the Friends of the Cut out is Cesarewicz, this high value staying handicap, 30 runners over two miles and half a furlong. Spread right across the track, it's Golden Flame, one of the first to show up with a lot of joy. Close up is York Senny, followed by Dam Repeat and HMS Seahorse, Jed and Me and Fringe Clay moving up onto the heels of the leaders with Edel of Tyrone not far behind them. Calling the wind is there towards the inside as they sort themselves out the end of the opening quarter of a mile. Fringe Clay just picks it up from York City, being followed by Golden Flame and Jed and me, then Edel of Tyrone and calling the wind on the inside with Dam Repeat and HMS Seahorse, the grey Inuit next with Taipan, chopped out of room there, Whiskey Sour, Taipan followed by Classic Lord and there followed by Azalea with, towards the inside, ruling, lot of joy in mid-division, then Whiskey Sour and Maze Runner and Echoes and Rain after the stable companion, Shan Rowe, Cleveland, Mare War next with Mighty Blue and Master of Reality. And then Phoenix Cowboy, who's towards the inside with, after them is Benno and Tax for Max next. All those towards rear division with Okita Soshi, Falconate, Parfil, Aggie, and Waterville. Looks to be the overall back marker with less than 10 furlongs to go. Wordsworth, another one of the back numbers. As Fringe Clay moves on in front by a couple of lengths. In second place as they begin the run towards the nine mark is York Senny, and in third place, Golden Flame with Dam Repeat, and then Calling the Wind, and Jed and Me next with Earl of Tyrone and HMS Seahorse and Inuit and Taipan and Classic Lord, ruling next on the inside. They're being followed by Lot of Joy and Azalea, Echoes and Rain and Maze Run and Mighty Blue, Whiskey Sour and Shanro next on the outside. Merwar followed towards halfway by Phoenix Cowboy, and then Wordsworth, they've just passed the halfway stage, they begin the Climb inside the seven in the Friends of the Carrara Cesarewicz. The field led by Fringe Claim. Yoxeni a handy second and Golden Flame. Calling the wind after the visitors, Jeremy the Red Cap. Dam repeat next with Edel of Tyrone and Inuit, Nature Messi, Orson Taipan, and Lot of Joy is creeping up. Echoes and Rain next with Ruding and Maze Runner. Driven along as Classic Lord as they begin the run towards the top of the track. And it is Fringe Claim joined by Yoxeni. They stretch their advantage to four. Links over Golden Flame, calling the win next with Jed and me and Inuit Nature Mess Seahorse, improving steadily his lot of joy. On the inside is ruling with echoes and rain, driven along as Taipan, then Mighty Blue, Whiskey Sour and Maze Runner and Cleveland, their homeward band in the Irish Cesarewicz of 2022. Matching strides, York Senny pushed along on the rail as Fringe Claim after them is calling the win. Lot of joy continues to make ground. Then Inuit Nell of Tyrone, ruling is cutting through the field, and Jed and me is getting close there. Bendu is next with Falcon 8, Neckers and Rain and HMS Seahorse. They pass the two. York Senny headed by Lot of Joy, rolling after them with Echoes and Rain picking up. Inuit next, we're calling the wind. Falcon 8, Wakening is French claim, then Benno, Waterville from last, then Cleveland, Taipan on the outside, then Perfilagi, Echoes and Rain and Lot of Joy, the stable companions. Here's Waterville who's finishing with a rattle. Echoes and Rain, Waterville from last to first at the Yanis Cezanovich in second as Echoes and Rain, then Lot of Joy. Falcon 8 and ruling next with Cleveland and Mighty Blue and Taipan. What a par pack finish by the Butterway. Let's have a word then with the man who's pulled off an incredible ride. Last to first, Wayne. Just tell us how much of a thrill that was for you. When I passed the line in front, <laughs> I, got, I got the thrill then. Look, Aidan filled me confidence. He said he's a good horse. He said, take your time. Don't rush him. Um, and he said, halfway, he'll come on the bridle. And he said, take your chances down the inside. He did come on the bridle. I took my chances and then I decided I'd have to come out. But I hit the line good. It was taking your time and taking your time. You were last in a 30-runner field. Was it really the plan to be that far back? No, well, I took my time. The pace was on and I didn't want to force him. He's only a three-year-old. And um, going two miles a long way against older horses as well. So I just left him find his feet and I was trying not to bully him. And I think at halfway when... A few of them started to struggle, he came on the bridle. Talk us through the last two furlongs. I think there was one dropping back in front of you at one stage. You had to cut outside that. From there on, was it just a case of hoping the gaps would open? Yeah, I was coming fast. I was hoping I wasn't going to get stopped. Um, but look, when you're coming home like that, you can take gaps that are maybe just coming and you get there. 
Um, if I wasn't going as well, I probably would have got knocked down, but it worked out today. And be honest, was there a moment where you thought you might finish second or third and wonder what the reaction might be? Um, no, Aidan is <laughs> always pretty fair. Um, now, he probably didn't mean to sit, me la sit last, but um, as I said, there was a lot of, it was a rough race and I didn't want to get him bullied out of it. Um, so, anyway, it all worked out today. It did. Wayne, he was spoken of as a potential derby horse earlier on in the career. I mean, has he done anything there that surprised you based on what you've seen of him at home? No, he's a very good worker. Um, look, he might be a bit babyish. You know, them staying horses take time and he could be just one of those horses. Top horse in the making? Definitely. Well done, sir. Thank Thanks you. Fine.